Hello everyone and welcome back to D Outdoors. I'm Jack and today I'm gonna be doing something a little different. I've never tried this before. I've thought about it, never tried it, but I'm gonna make a fishing lure out of this little block of wood. Um, I've got my tools, I've got some sanding paper, I got some carving stuff, I have gorilla glue, super glue, paints, I have my cutout stencils, I have 20 gram metal stainless steel wire, and I have a block of wood. Let's just hope this goes well and let's get to it. And yes, I have no workshop, no table saw, no belt sander, no band saw. I have nothing, I just have what I showed you. So it's gonna be very interesting. I'm gonna be doing it in my living room. I'm also going to be putting the chips in like this bucket just to hold the chips so I don't make a mess in my carpet. But this will be great, it'll be fun, and it's something you can do too if you have limited supplies like I do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take half of my stencil, and I'm just gonna put some glue on it, and stick it to my piece of wood. Just like that. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna kinda carve the whole wood down just around this shape, so it has this profile. But I'm gonna keep the top flat, I'm not gonna curve at all. I'm gonna keep it kinda boxy. got the general shape down of this thing. Now I'm gonna take my 60 coarse sandpaper and try to get the edges of this a little bit smoother because it's very rough right now. And then after I get that, I'm gonna tape down or glue down the top and bottom of the little picture I have drawn onto there and then carve around those and then sand it down and so and so. So let's get to that now. until my hand hurts and then I sand it a little more it's not perfect but you can kind of see the shape is it's taking form so now I think I'm going to I can find my glue I'm glue these top and bottom pieces on here because now I have to kind of take it down to this this I don't know if I can show you I gotta take it down to this shape so I'm gonna glue these on and get back to carving. All right, so I kind of got the sides down. I made it really kind of scraggly. But looking back at now, I probably should have done this a little bit ago, but I need to cut where the joint, because this is going to be a joint swim bait. Um, the only little saw I could find was this, my little Swiss Army knife, otherwise I have like huge ones, but I need to, I need to kind of cut the V right here. So this will probably take me a while, but I'll come back when I almost have this cut all the way through. I'm not going to go all the way through, I'm just going to kind of start it so that I can shape around it and finish the cut later. But I'll get back to you when that's done. All right, I'm back. It only took about 35 minutes, but as you can kind of see, I cut those in there. I didn't cut all the way through because I still want it to be one solid piece. But now before I go any further, I'm going to drill holes in here for the weights and for the, uh, like the hooks. So 
I'm gonna get to that. Take my gel right off of the ice auger and pop some holes in this puppy. All right, now I got those holes drilled and they should be big enough for me to stick this uh, lead split shot in there, which is what I'm using for weights because I don't really have like a lead melter. So I'm gonna pinch these down and hopefully they fit in the hole. If not, I'll have to drill a bigger hole. So now it, it still looks really boxy. So I'm gonna take probably another hour and just sand it all, make it nice round and unblocky and I'll get back to you when I'm done with that. All right, <clears throat> so now at the point where I've got it sanded and carved to pretty much how I want it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my little annoying Swiss Army knife and continue to just chip at those away slowly so it comes in two pieces. And then I'm going to keep sanding it a little bit more with my finer grain, probably 100, 150. And then continue on with the process. Alright, they're cut in half now. <sighs> Took a while but I got it. Now they're sanded, I sanded them a little bit off camera. Now I just have to take my caliper, measure and mark. Based off this picture, those are where I want to put the two. So I'm going to measure down on this, measure on this, mark, and then uh, drill some holes in it. Yeah, we'll do point. Screw it, we'll just go inch. Seems about right. Let's push the caliper in and that makes just enough of a mark so I can tell. Then we're gonna do it here. Just an inch. Down. Right about uh, 0.59. Right about there. that mark a little bit more defined. Now we'll do, oh, remove it, 0.59. Right so now my next step is that I drew out kind of this little gill design. I'm just gonna take this little knife tool here and kind of butt up and carve out my little gills. All right, now here I got some of the more details of the face down. Now I have really fine 150 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna go make sure it's all nice and smooth because when I paint it, I'm not gonna wanna see all the little imperfections that I left.
All right, now I have all of my little eyelets and connector pieces made and cut to size. Now I just gotta mix some five minute epoxy and put them in these holes and make a fishing lure. So now it's time to use my five minute epoxy and put everything together. We'll just make it over here. Stir it. So, gonna get all I can to shove in. Shove it all in the hole. I can always sand it out later. All right, now I can just leave those like that, I believe. Make sure they push all in. Now I'm gonna use this. Still to get. All in that hole. All right, that should work. Now that's the batch. We're just gonna let those dry, and then do the rest of them in a minute. Now it's all put together. Just gonna have to let it sit, and then keep on working on it. Okay, so now I have it all in one piece. Everything's kind of glued. I haven't sanded it yet. But now I'm going to put my sinkers in here as the weights. So I'm just... Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some baking soda and just fill in the hole. And then overflow the hole. We're going to do this for every hole. Gonna take the super glue, which I probably should have opened earlier, but we're gonna open it now. And just put super glue all on this baking soda. And for some reason, science allows this to make like a uh, paste type stuff, like a little cement. Uh oh. Like a little chemical reaction we got going on here. <laughs> Started smoking. A little more super glue. A little more super glue there. More super glue there. Some more super glue there. Some more there. Some more there. All right, if I let some super glue drip down in that, let some super glue drip down in that, and I'll let some drip down into that. Now everything is super glued and baking soda. <laughs> Sounds kind of weird. I'm gonna just lean it up against that and just gonna let it sit and dry. I'll be back when it's dried to sand it and make it all nice and smooth and pretty like. Oh, okay. I didn't mean to knock it over. Okay, wow. 
That worked really good. These are all working good. Everything's working for the most part. Huh, everything is working. These are just a little sticky. I got some glue stuck in there, but I think it should be fine. Now time to just kind of sand down this little, little science experiment I had. It's about time to paint this puppy. She's all put together, all sanded. I'll show you the colors. See if you can guess what I'm gonna paint it by just those colors. final step is to coat it with some polyurethane, get it shiny and waterproof in a clear coat. So finally just about to be done with this thing. Okay, it is done. Everything is polyed. It just needs to dry now. <laughs> For a time reference, it is 10.45 at night. I started this project at 10.30 in the morning, so 12 hour project. Definitely took a long time. My back hurts, my hands hurt, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I'll show you the finished product in the morning with two beautiful red hooks on there, and I hope it looks great. See you in the morning. Good morning. My fishing lure is finally done drying. I just put some hooks on it and whoo, does it look pretty. Look at that. This took such a long time and I'm so happy with how it turned out. As always, thanks for watching. Let me know if I should do another one of these because it was a lot of fun, but it took a long time. And uh, stay tuned for more from Deer Outdoors.